A few months ago my dad and I bought ourselves a Tormek sharpening machine together with a lot of sharpening jigs for it. It came in a set and using it is great and all, but for using it optimally it should be at quite a low height, much lower than my workbench. And of course Tormek sells a nice little stand, like a cabinet with drawers for all the accessories, the machine sitting on top, that's all perfect. But this little stand is actually more expensive than the machine itself, which is quite ridiculous and there's no way we are going to buy this stand. So instead, in this video I'm going to build my own stand, just like the one they sell out of wood. The material I'm using for the frame is solid beach hardwood and these are all off cuts and leftover pieces from my dining table build that I did recently. And if I did everything right with the layout, I should be able to get all pieces out of just what's laying here. I said it once and I'll say it again, the guy who gave me the circular saw through my Amazon wishlist is awesome. It was quite a game changer in terms of breaking down bigger pieces. I then went through my regular procedure when preparing lumber cutting to width on the table saw, then jointing one face and edge, and planing parallel and to thickness with the planer. I'm now gluing some of the boards to one block, and that has a few advantages. First of all, I only have to do one glue up, that goes a lot faster. And I also need to always glue two pieces together to get the legs I want. But it turned out that some of the boards are just a little too thin and no matter how I would match them together, that wouldn't be enough for the piece I need. I actually had to add a ninth piece to the whole glue up. And now when I have a big block, I can then cut four legs out of that block afterwards. Since the legs are square, I could cut all four sides with the jointer planer to size with just one setting of the planer. then cutting the remaining pieces to width and then everything to length. The last lumber to prepare were the side and back panels which I am using 12mm thick birch plywood for. With the sliding table there is also a clever way to joint an almost straight edge as you can see here. And I also sanded the panels already because now it's easiest. Okay, I got all my pieces cut to size now, including the side and back panels, which are pre-sanded. Next is cutting the joinery, which is pretty simple. First of all, these pieces here, except for two of them, get a slot all the way through for the panels. Two of them, of course not, because they are for the front. I'm routing the slots on the router table in two passes while rotating the piece for the second pass. That makes the slot perfectly centered. Off camera I adjusted the fence to give the slot the correct size and once that was dialed in, I could raise the bit and finish all slots. These grooves are not done, next come the ones in the leg pieces, they don't go all the way through and that's easier done with a handheld router and a jig and a bit that can plunge. I have the pieces clamped in my vise and this is my version of the Samurai router jig which I also have a video about. And this very precisely guides the router along the piece. I made a mark at the start and end location of the slot. Here I then flipped the piece around to get the slot centered again. Off cam I already adjusted the fences of the jigs so that the slot will have the correct size. Next come the mortises on all ends, where these pieces will join with the tenon. Therefore I first make a mark where it ends and make it more visible. Making the mortises now is extremely simple because I designed them to be the same size as the already existing slot. That means I can use the exact same router settings and just plunge a little deeper. Also I could do two at a time before rotating. Except for squaring the ends, the mortises are not done and before I square them I first cut the tenons on all the other pieces. It could be also done with the router jig but is much simpler with the table saw. I designed the mortises to be 20 millimeters long, so I set the fence to be exactly 20 millimeters from this edge of the blade. 
Then I make a series of cuts, break the little pieces away and graze over the blade to clean the surface. Doing that from all sides makes the tenon perfectly centered. I squared up one of the mortises for test fitting. And that's still a little too tight. So I now raise the blade just a little bit and cut again. Now that fits good. And since all these pieces have the exact same dimensions, it's now the same procedure for all of them and then the joinery is complete. Here I also came up with a faster way of cutting everything by removing the majority with the bandsaw and then just grazing over the table saw blade. The tenons are all done, next squaring up all mortises. And test fitting. That looks good. I made the mortises a little oversized so I can slide this piece to the correct position and don't have to make the mortise absolutely perfect because if you don't want to make it perfect, at least make it adjustable. Okay, that's all done. Now the first dry assembly. That looks pretty good and square, so I can go on. All pieces get a round over on two sides and the legs on all four sides. Now for sanding, I think I can save some time if I clamp all the pieces that have the same size together and sand them at once. Lastly, the four upper pieces get a slot. You'll see later what that's good for. And then it was time for the glue. I first glued the sides of the cabinet together, waited about 40 minutes and then went on. With two diagonal clamps I could make everything square. And while the glue is drying I can edit a little bit of this video. Now for the top I decided to use a thick piece of plywood that I already have for a long time and no other use for. With my CNC router I cut a deepening into it. The edge was done with a bone nose router bit. And that deepening will contain the water that will drip off the tarmac during sharpening. I didn't really like the look after the CNC works so I used some dark walnut stain. At the same time I then also finished the cabinet. I didn't have to sand at any complicated angles and positions because I had already sanded everything before gluing. I made a separate video about the leveling feet and you can watch it with the link in the video description or at the end of this video. The last step is mounting the top. Therefore I made these little brackets. And they fit in the slot I made earlier. And now it's done. And now I can bring it to its new home. This is now at a very good height to work at and here's also a lot of light and a white wall that reflects a lot of light. Perfect for this situation. In my next video I'll then make a bunch of drawers in which I can store all the accessories we have for this machine.
what you can see here is my first real camera accident and even if I could have reacted quickly enough the tables I was running so I had to let it happen fortunately nothing major got damaged only the lens cover a little bit I could reglue that so everything is fine 